a mighty beast reigning over the green plains, a titan capable of striking fear in even the strongest predators, a monster inspiring strength and energy. Meet the Indian bison, or more commonly known as the gaur. The gaur is a very interesting animal. It is the largest and tallest species of wild cattle. And while it may only be a herbivore, this cow can send even the apex predators running for their life. So don't be fooled by its eating habits. Their imposing build and formidable power are a true essence of the raw wilderness they inhibit. The gaur has a blend of black and brown coat, which is very contrasting to their legs, which are white or sometimes tan. Their horns are a true marvel of evolution. The curved horns are about 60 to 117 centimeters long. They symbolize the raw strength and daringness of this wild beast. Both sexes have horns. The females generally weigh about 440 to 1,000 kilograms, while the males may weigh up to 550 to 1,500 kilograms. In size, males are a quarter larger than females. A gaur on average can be about five to six feet tall and nearly nine feet long, excluding the tail, making it the tallest species of wild cattle and a true tank of nature. The tail is another additional 60 to 110 centimeters. The tail doesn't serve any other purpose than to be a natural fly swatter and protect them from insect bites and to stop any distraction from the insects. Because if it isn't too careful, it might just become a tiger's next meal. The gaur usually can be seen in areas with abundance of water and fodder, preferably places with grasses or bushes or even bamboo. They usually hail from South and Southeast Asia from countries such as India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, and Malaysia. Impressively, India is home to approximately 85% of the global gaur population, underscoring its significance in the conservation of this majestic creature. While they might appear gentle when they're munching away in the grasslands, they can be formidable when threatened. Their social structure and daily patterns are another marvel to behold. Gower herds are typically female-centric, led by a dominant female and comprising of her close relatives and offspring. The males, post reaching a certain age, prefer to stay solitary or occasionally form bachelor groups. The herd can be a very deadly obstacle for the Gower's predators because when a predator tries to kill an animal in the herd, the rest will be sure to follow and save their herd mate, or sometimes just get revenge. This is a tactic gowers and other cattle species use as well. In this video, buffaloes can be seen using the same strategy, like this unfortunate leopard. It is believed that this leopard in India, aged three years old, managed to kill a female gower and was feasting on her body. That was until her herd mates found out and impaled the poor leopard to death. Female gaurs are very protective of their children. They will go any length to protect their young ones. A gaur herd usually sleeps in a circle with all the females pointing outwards, facing any predator that comes their way, protecting their young ones quite fiercely. Like this mother who simply refused to give up on her precious baby, despite her probably knowing very well that this was a lost cause and it was just a matter of time. The mother did not give up to the point where it was even defending the calf's corpse. The calf had died from being bitten so many times that it bled to death. A gower gives birth to a calf with a gestation period of about 275 days. A gower calf is usually born with a lighter skin than the adults, but it gradually gains a darker look. The gower is a very aggressive animal. It may even attack when they are not provoked. If you see one, keeping a safe distance should be your first priority. They have a wide range of ways to defend themselves. The most common way is to charge at the opponent. Even ignoring the horns, a weight of 1,000 kilograms approaching you at 55 kilometers per hour is not something one would wish for. Now, the horns. Goring an animal to death is usually the most common way for a gower to deal with someone it doesn't like. This method has also proven to be most effective for the gaur to get rid of its predators. What goring means is essentially lowering their heads and then thrusting it upwards or forwards when in contact with the target to use the full potential of the horns. The horns aren't just for show. If the opponent still somehow survives these attacks, 
the Gower will make a sharp turn to trample over its unfortunate provoker, and being run over by 1,000 kilograms of a beast isn't something anyone would have in their bucket list. Gowers have a very interesting relationship with tigers. They are often seen as nemesis to each other. Many gowers are killed by tigers, and many tigers are killed by gowers. It is very interesting to see the two most powerful animals on Earth meeting eye to eye in order to survive. The tiger is not the only animal that hunts the gower, but it is the most notable. Dole packs and leopards, however, also pose threats, especially to gower calves or weakened adults. A crocodile, though rare, may strike down a gower by its impressive jaw strength if they find one drinking water or crossing river bodies. The tiger, though, is the only one skilled and powerful enough to actually take down a gower. But again, it's not always the tigers who win. This unfortunate tigress, aged about 10 years in India, was also gored to death by a gower. But it's not only the tigers who face unfortunate death from the hands of these menacing bovines. Humans have also been targeted by these animals. For example, just recently, at 19 of May, three elderly men were found dead, believed to have been killed by a raging gower. The people living nearby protested for the police to shoot down this creature because it was either the gower that would have to go or them. Another such incident about six years ago, Anil Pawar, a farmer, was killed by a raging gower. A local journalist went to cover the story. Unfortunately for him, the mighty gower returned and in a fit of fury killed the journalist. There are many cases where some were fortunate enough to survive an encounter with this formidable creature. The gower is a true marvel of evolution. However, nature did not prepare it to face us. The gower is an endangered species due to habitat loss by human activities like building infrastructure, agricultural activities, resource extraction, and such. In fact, the gore was among the earliest animals to be cloned due to its declining number. However, the resulting calf, named Noah, died of dysentery infection in about 48 hours. Sometimes these animals may even end up being leucistic, as in, it would have white or pale, but its eyes would be normal colored. Though this is not to be confused with albinism, in which the entirety of the body is white, even the eyes. Things like these just go on to show how remarkable these creatures can truly be. The biodiversity of Earth is truly something to be protected with all of life. The Gower, while a majestic representation of the wild, faces threats not only from nature, but from humans too. As human settlements and activities encroach upon their habitats, conflicts arise. As we continue to take over the habitats of wild animals, we inadvertently push them closer to human territories. This has led to cases of humans being targeted by the very animals whose homes we diminish, not necessarily out of malice, but often out of sheer desperation or defense of territory. United, we have the power to change and reshape our future. So let's make sure the stories of the Gowers aren't a quiet whisper of the past, rather a loud saga heard even in the future. Spread the word and share this video to others to raise awareness for this magnificent creature. Make sure you don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well and like the video to support us in making more content like this. See you on our next journey.